Hi again. So this is uh, part two of uh, fluidization lecture. So let's look into bubbling and non-bubbling fluidization. So in this um, part of lecture, we will look into how the bed uh, expands in both this uh, fluidization. So what happens above minimum fluidization? So minimum fluidization is termed as UMF. Yeah. So uh, beyond UMF, uh, the fluidization can be bubbling or non-bubbling. So bubbling, as the term suggests, uh, you will have pockets, air pockets uh, among the fluidized bed. So that is bubbling fluidization. And for non-bubbling fluidization, you will not notice uh, any air pockets. You will only uh, notice expansion of the bed, bed and uh, a more homogenized uh, fluidization. So let's look into a video which differentiates uh, both this bubbling and non-bubbling fluidization. Here is a short movie showing the non-bubbling expansion of a bed of Group A powder as gas velocity is slowly increased. This was taken on Super 8 film by Geldart and later converted to video and then digitized. So the quality is not too good and a few frames are missing in the middle. But it does show what we need to see. It starts with a packed bed. The red line is there to guide the eye to the initial location of the packed bed surface. As the velocity increases, the bed becomes fluidized and the bed expands as the gas velocity increases. The bed expands by about 80 millimeters before the first bubbles appear. So there is a range of gas velocities between UMF and UMB for which non-bubbling fluidization occurs. If you watch carefully, you will notice that the bed height decreases somewhat once it starts bubbling. This has something to do with the stable structure of the non-bubbling bed being disturbed by the appearance of the bubbles. Another characteristic of Group A powders is the way in which the expanded bed collapses when the gas supply is stopped. After the, the initial loss of bubbles, the collapse is linear with time, very similar to the sedimentation of dense suspensions in liquids, and is governed by the same equations. Another. Okay, so what the author, what the um, speaker mentioned just now was that if you notice the bed actually expanded, then once uh, the velocity or the air, uh, the air or fluid velocity, gas velocity actually they use gas, gas velocity was reduced. The bed, the expanded bed, came back to its original bed height. Okay, and you will also notice that they mentioned that these are group A powders. So in our next um, lecture, which is part three of fluidization, we will learn about this different group of powders. Right, okay, let's uh, watch bubbling fluidization. Characteristic peculiar to group A powders is that through splitting and coalescence, bubbles achieve a maximum stable size, effectively independent of gas velocity and vessel size. The significance of the bubbling behavior here will not be appreciated until it is contrasted with that of a group B powder. Right. So that So in general, uh, non-bubbling fluidization is known as particulate or homogeneous fluidization, while bubbling fluidization is aggregative or heterogeneous fluidization. So the liquid system usually does not give rise to bubbling. However, some liquid and particle combination does give only bubbling fluidization and the rest will give you non-bubbling fluidization. In a gas system where the fluid is gas, the system either gives only bubbling or non-bubbling fluidization at minimum fluidization. 
and this is followed by bubbling fluidization as the velocity increases. So that's why in a gas solid system, it's usually aggregative or heterogeneous fluidization. So let's look into the bed expansion in uh, both non-bubbling and bubbling bed. So for non-bubbling, there is a region where U increases, particle separation increases, but the uh, pressure drop across the bed, uh, the bed height remains constant. So in this case, um, the bed expansion is related can be related uh, to the bed voidage and the fluid velocity. The fluid velocity is related to terminal velocity, UT, single particle terminal velocity. So Richardson and Zaki came about with, the, with this equation where fluid velocity in a fluidized bed is equivalent to the single particle terminal velocity in the fluid times by the bed voidage so bed voidage is the volume fraction which is not occupied by the solids it's occupied by the fluids and there is an exponential value to it so this n exponent is dependent on the reynolds number of the uh, of the bed actually of the particles of how it moves Mm. So, uh, different uh, um, fluid um, Reynolds number, different uh, system with different Reynolds number will have a different voidage for the same fluid velocity. So, that is described by this equa uh, equation. So, if the Reynolds number is bigger than or smaller than 500, the N is equal to 2.4. And if the Reynolds number is much som smaller, which is less than 0.3, the n is 4.65. So using this equation, we can actually estimate the bed expansion of a non-bubbling bed. So just to recall, a uh, single uh, particle terminal velocity, ut, is actually a uh, terminal velocity. Um, terminal velocity is the speed at which an object is free falling and no longer accelerating. So the best example of... Um, of uh, terminal velocity uh, is when someone is jumping off a high-rise building so when the person is jumping off the high-rise building initially he will feel the acceleration so from zero he's accelerating to uh, let's say uh, 50 kilometer an hour or 50 meter an hour so but uh, after a certain point um, there will be a balance of forces and uh, the person will not feel uh, like the person is accelerating. He will feel like he's flying like a bird. And then finally, doom, he will hit the floor. So when he hit the floor, he's actually happy. He thinks he's flying and then there comes the worst moment. So that, that point where you feel like you are floating in the air weightless, that is but terminal velocity. So in this case, a uh, single particle terminal velocity in the fluid is termed as U. So as the fluid uh, increases above uh, UMF, the bed voidage expands exponentially. So the, the expansion is exponential. The particles are in terminal velocity and the pressure drop is constant. So this is for a non-bubbling bed. So if a packed bed depth and voidage are known, then if the mass remains constant, the bed de depth at any voidage can be determined. H1 and H2 is proportional. So the voidage determines the bed height. And uh, so H, uh, when, we, when the voidage increases, the height of the bed also increases proportionally. So we can use this equation uh, to find H1 and H2. Okay, let's look into expansion of a bubbling bed. Bubbling bed is slightly different. In a non-bubbling condition, all Q, Q is the flow rate, yeah, flow rate of your fluid, uh, which is UA. So all 
uh, the flow rate are used up in fluidization so mm, this whole thing is ua this is for a non bubbling condition but when you have a bubbling condition your flow rate is actually a sum of uh, a minimum fluidization flow rate that means uh, the the flow uh, a part of the flow that is used to float the particles and then uh, it's summed up with the bubbles bubbles is the excess gas that is not used to float the particles but instead is is a you know, group of gas that escapes through the bed so this q here uh, splits into uh, qmf which floats the particle and q bubbles which forms the bubble pockets so at bubbling condition q is equals to qmf plus qb so this is called uh, the gas flows in a fluidized bed is actually termed as two phase theory so the two phase refers to the bubbling phase and the particulate phase the emulsion phase so the emulsion phase is the fluidized solids around the bubbles uh, this is where the qmf is used that is the particulate emulsion so the theory says any gas in excess of incipient or minimum fluidization will pass as bubbles so um these are the equation uh, we use to calculate uh, the bubbling bed expansion so we can also find out uh, how much gas is passing through the emulsion phase so the emulsion the amount of gas used for the emulsion phase the particulate phase is qmf and it's defined by the umf times the area of the bed so from this uh, qmf uh, we can also get the bubbles where the difference between the total uh, flow of gas passing through minus the emulsion phase so that gives us the uh, gas passing through as bubbles so the bed expansion is again defined by the uh, void of the bed and that voidage of the bed can be explained using bed height velocity and flow rate of the fluid the total of this parameter minus the one used for the particulate phase which is the qmf umf or hmf so that will give us the bed expansion uh, in terms of the bed occupied by bubbles that means how much of the um, void is occupied by bubbles is given by this equation and then the voidage at emulsion phase so the uh, the emulsion phase whereby the particles are moving like a fluid there's also voidage so the mean bed uh, okay that that sorry that emulsion phase voidage is termed as epsilon uh, mf uh, epsilon mf so if the mean bed voidage which is the total mean bed voidage is defined uh, by the voidage of bubbles and voidage of emulsion phase so we can use this equation to find uh, emf so the visible bubble flow rate is defined by qb actually we can find it using this equation another way to find it is using this equation so what uh, what is the slight difference is that this equation has got a y term because if we just uh, equate it to this equation uh, in practice uh, it seems like uh, the two phase theory overestimates the volume of gas passing through the bed as bubbles different group of powders will actually affect the rate of the bubble flow rate so uh, they uh, so uh, the characteristics of the powders has been introduced into this equation to get a more accurate results of qb 
so each of these powders so there are actually four types of powders a b d and uh, a b c and d which we will look into in the next um, part three lecture so each of these has got a, a range of uh, constant that can be used to calculate the um, visible bubble flow rate qb so it's the same formula as the qmf and then we times by the constant which defines the group of powder that is being used. Okay, so that was the um, simple and short uh, explanation about uh, bubbling and non-bubbling bit expansion. So here is an exercise which uh, I got from the Martin Rhodes textbook. Uh, please uh, do this exercise and here you will actually use the equations that has been introduced in the slides. This would be your assignment 8. Right, let's move into uh, entrainment. This is also an important um, part in the design of a fluidized bed. So entrainment is the carryover of particles from a fluidized bed. So for example, if I have a fluidized bed here, this is a fluidized bed. So, in simpler sense, what happens is that when the gas velocity exceeds the terminal velocity of a particle in the fluidized bed, so you can expect the particles to be removed from the bed. That means it moves on with the air and then it moves out of the system. So, it actually gets carried over from the fluidized bed to this point. So, this is called entrainment. And other term for it is, is also elutriation or carry over. So I've actually given a video link to it. So you could probably watch it uh, on your spectrum slides. In designing a fluidized bed, we must consider the entrainment factor. So this is the range of a fluidized bed and this is free bot. Free bot means the particles are moving like a fluid and it's moving along with the uh, fluid fluid uh, either be it air or gas. So in this case we are discussing uh, gas fluidization. Um, so get, uh, in fact entrainment is more evident in the gas fluidization. So and this free bot is divided into three different phases. So once uh, as the gas containing and trained particles okay, from bed, so some of the particles um, are lifted beyond the bed particles because there's enough density to uplift it. So it moves in the free bot. So this splash zone is a point where lots of particles from the bed is released into terminal velocity zone so at its as the particles moves up the smaller particles will remain entrained and will continue to move up and the bigger ones will actually fall back to the bed and fall back to the bed so this point where the bigger particles drops and the smaller particles continue to move up is called disengaging uh, zone transport disengagement height that is tdh so this is a disengaging zone so this point is very important so fluidization gas exit should be above this tdh transport disengagement height the tdh and ent entrainment rate and the size of particles being entered are important design parameters for a fluidized bed. Because the TDH is required, because the cyclone or vessel exits are commonly installed above the TDH. Why do we install it above the TDH? It's because we want to reduce the solid loadings to the cyclone and minimize exit losses. We don't want too much of particles to actually exit our fluidized system. So beyond this TDH zone is the dilute 
phase uh, transport where the particles will not fall back to the bed it will continue to move on to the next system and the next um, system is usually cyclone so after we learn pneumatic transport we will learn uh, cyclone designing so the entrained particle size distribution is needed to size the cyclone and determine the resulting collection efficiency so in most cases when we have these particles uh, uh, moving out to the cyclone we want to collect those particles so in collecting the particles we need to know the size of particles that are escaping uh, this fluidized bed so that we can collect it efficiently so that is entrainment um, for uh, entrainment uh, required consideration in designing fluidized bed. Right, uh, that's all for this lecture. See you in the next lecture.